Hi, I'm Philip. I'm going to talk about object-orientated programming related to the HSC software design and development syllabus. In this video, I'm going to give an overview of all the concepts in the syllabus. In later videos, you'll see explanation and examples in a programming language. One of the major concepts of object orientated is the concept of abstraction. This is where the focus of objects is what it does and what it can do and hold rather than actually how it does it. So you're looking at the attributes, which an object is the data that it holds, and the methods or operations that can occur on those attributes. So an important concept also is encapsulation. So within that object, you can only access the data, the attributes, from the methods or operations. An object is created from a class. So a class is the framework from which the objects are instantiated. We create an instance of the class and put that into memory which is the object. Classes also have subclasses and the concept of that is you inherit methods and attributes from a parent or superclass enabling you to take advantage of existing classes where you can add to them or modify them. Objects and classes are one of the major concepts in object oriented. A class is a template or mold. Now a class you can't do anything with until you actually make an instance of it, which is an object. So I can have a generic class of person, which enables you to hold information about a person, get access about a person. But until you make an instance of it, e.g. create a person called Fred or another one called Mary, then you can't actually use it. A subclass of a person may be teacher or student. So a teacher or a student class would each inherit the person attributes and methods and then you could actually build upon that and modify those or add new ones. Lastly, the two concepts of an object is it has an attribute or state which is the data that's held associated with that and the methods that allow you to access or manipulate that data. And as I said, the important thing is you can't access the attributes except through those methods and operations, which is a concept of encapsulation. So here's an example of a class, and the class is person. So we have attributes, and the attributes of a person hold a name, the age and gender of that person. You can't access that data except through the appropriate methods. So I can access the name by saying get a name, or if I want to change it, I can say set name would enable me to change the name. So each of these methods enable me to access or modify the attributes of a person. Now the important thing is when you create a instance of it, say for Fred, what you're doing is you're, you're creating an object so here we have is new, so we're creating a new instance of the person class, and we're going to call it Fred. Now what we're doing over here is, this is the data which we're going to send to the class initially to instantiate or set up the attributes. So we're going to have Fred, 32 and male as the attributes of that person. Once we set that up, we can actually access the Fred object and we can access the methods, in this case the get age method, to find out and return Fred's age. And you know it's a method because it has the brackets and we're having the dot after the object. Here's another example of some object orientated classes. We have a class line, circle, rectangle, an object. These are the attributes of those, the data that's held, and these are some of the methods that you would have. What's important with this is when you're defining 
um, these methods, you're actually focusing on the abstraction, e.g. The, the data that's held and the methods that's going to be used in those. With inheritance, here's an example. I could set up a base class called closed figures and I would in that set up attributes such as the X and Y location. That is something in e that is contained in each of those subclasses. So if I have that attribute, circle, triangle and rectangle would inherit each of those attributes. The other one I could do is I could have a method called compute area in that base class. Circle, triangle and rectangle would inherit that compute area. Now this is a concept of polymorphism. What we could then do is in each of these circle, rectangle and triangle we would override that existing compute area and change it for circle and change it for triangle and change it for rectangle. Each would use a method compute area but how it does it will be different. So that's the concept of polymorphism where a method such as compute area creates the area but how it does it for different objects or different classes is different. Now that's an overview of all the major concepts in object oriented. If you go on to some of the future videos, you'll see some examples in a programming language. Thank you.